Hello, I'm Janine and this is Janine Sews. If this is the first time you've stopped by my channel, my focus is sewing garments for a woman over 50. I've been a member of that demographic for several years and I'm still trying to find my way. If you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for stopping by. Today's video is a review of how I did in my sewing life in 2023 and my plans for 2024. Last year at the beginning of January, I wrote down my sewing goals and I checked in on them several times during the year. And I did look at the list quite frequently throughout the year because I, those were things I wanted to accomplish. For the past couple of weeks, I've taken a deep dive into what I sewed last year and how successful I was, not only in the goals that I'd set at the beginning of the year, but also in sewing things that I will actually wear and that I think look nice on me and represent me. So I've put together a few slides. This is not gonna be like a work PowerPoint presentation. It's more just a retrospective of what I did last year and was I on track or was I off track? At the beginning of the year, I set a few goals. The first was to perfect pants. Perfecting pants is a big job. I did wind up with one pretty good result that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. I wanted to de-stash my paper patterns in particular and I wound up getting rid of about 60 in total. I wanted to stick to elegant, casual, basics, more solid colored fabrics and three techniques, linings, applique, and improving zipper installation. I made progress on linings and improving zipper installation, but I didn't even look at applique. Now, the projects that I sewed, I made 41 things last year. 31 were garments for me. I mostly use indie patterns. I sewed four craft projects and six things for other people. At the end of the year, I wound up being down one piece of fabric in my stash from the beginning of the year. So although I sewed 41 things, I bought 40 pieces of fabric. And 20, I used 22 new patterns and 15 were repeats from previous years. How did I do on style? The elegant, casual, basic style thing. Several were close. A few were way off, both in shapes and in colors and prints. I did buy some wild colored fabrics. I did sew some things that were pretty unflattering as well. Best and worst of the year. My best make, without a doubt, was the Cashmere Club Creston Jeans pattern. I did a full review of that that I'm gonna link up here, but I have worn those jeans so many times. I wore them when we went away over the holidays on a plane and they were comfortable and I felt perfectly presentable. I've got another piece of fabric sitting ready for another pair. The worst make of the year. This is something you didn't even see because I've never worn this garment. I've never shown it to anyone. It was awful. Terrible style choice. Wrong pattern for me and not just a juvenile print but an infantile print. I decided to make the Love Notions Ballad Blouse not the right shape for me with the tucks at the front and on the back. I had some problems with the pattern and then I made it in a crazy, super cute cat print, but it's not something I would wear ever. And it doesn't fit right, just have nothing pro but problems with this. So I'm going, I've popped this up here so you can see how bad it is. I'm not getting rid of it because it's going to be a reminder to me to make better choices in pattern and fabric in the future. Now, in terms of goals and plans for 2024, last year when I made my goals, I was working full time. I was in the office at least three days a week, working from home a couple of days a week, and I needed to have clothes that would work in the office in a business casual environment. Plus, I didn't want to have two separate wardrobes, one for work and one for home. So I was trying to merge the two together. 
Well, I stopped working in August, so I don't have to worry about a professional wardrobe, but I do still want to look nice. So this is something that I've really taken into account when I've set this year's goals. My theme for 2024 is, I had to write this down, focus on quiet luxury, quality fabric, good fit, sewn well, and things that work together. So it's sort of the succession thing, things that aren't flashy, but are, that are well made in nice fabric and are timeless, classic, but current styles. That means that I'm going to be working more on fit and on finesse. So some of the things on the inside that maybe aren't done as well, I want to do them better. I want to finish seams better, have nicer waistbands, generally improve some of the techniques that I'm using. I want to use my scan and cut machine because I do sew some crafty things and I've got a scan and cut that I've barely used and for techniques again I want to work on applique and I want to improve my ability to use bias tape and that also goes into the finesse part of my garments. Some specific sewing goals. I didn't want to set a lot of specific sewing goals but there are a few things that I really need to make. The first is my French jacket. The Calgary Sews Meetup group is doing a French jacket sew along and our goal is to have them done at the end of February. Then two of my sewing friends and I are sewing a Vogue tunic that I think is supposed to be done this weekend so I better get moving on it. Earlier in the year I picked up some pre-made drapery panels for our bedroom and I needed to get them hung up really quickly so I just hung them up and they were too long and I stapled the ham up. <laughs> so I have to remove the staples and actually hem those drapery panels. <laughs> then I need to I need a small purse. Something that's not in a crazy fabric. Something sophisticated and utilitarian but nice looking. I want to start using a croquis, which will help me in selecting shapes and styles. And when I have mending, I'm gonna do Mending Mondays. And I wanna sew down my stash. I was horrified last weekend when I did a true stash inventory and I have three times as many meters of fabric as I thought I did. So I want to be down net 30 meters of fabric by the end of the year shape. This will again be a focus for me because I don't want to look like I'm 21 but then I also don't want to look like an old retired person. So there's that balance of finding things that flatter the body and look current and we're comfortable in. So pants again are still going to be something that I'm working on and this year I'm in addition to general shape and fit I'm going to focus on length. I do have a tendency to wear pedal pushers and that's a really bad shape on me. So I, I'm going to make this notation that I can't wear things that are that length. Tops, there are going to be three things I check on every top before I sew them up. And that is, is the length right? Sometimes when you do an FBA, it's too short in the front. Is there pooling in the back and do the shoulders fit? And then generally, I need to heed the advice of experts. There are a lot of people who know what they're talking about and they post really good stuff online. And I need to watch their videos and get some hints and ideas from those people. In particular, I like, and I've said this before, I like Marianne Lecour, who's the French chic style expert, and MM Personal Styling, has some really good videos on shapes for different body types and shapes. Colors this year, I think that the color palette that I've been using is still working for me. The neutrals that I plan to work with more this year are winter white and soft gray and I'm going to limit navy because I now have all of the basics that I need in navy. Pops of color 
I think saturated colors work pretty well for me. So I'm going to continue with cool tone saturated colors. I definitely want to try something that's the Pantone color of the year, which is fuzzy peach. And I may con consider having my colors done professionally again. This year I put together my own sewing plan worksheet. And the categories that I have on it are challenges and or goals, all the ones that I mentioned previously. Skills or techniques to learn or try, specific projects, and then I added a box for accomplishments. You know at the end of the year when you have to do your annual review at work? Most of you have probably had to do that. I know I always had to do it. And every year I struggled because I couldn't remember things that I was either really proud of or something that I'd learned and I wanted to memorialize in some way. So I thought that I would leave a place on my sewing planner. So throughout the year, if there's something I've done really well or something I've finally learned, I can make a note of it. And it's easier to pat myself on the back at the end of the year. The other thing that I added onto my sewing plans at the bottom were my themes for the year. And I'm gonna read these. My two themes are to sew with purpose, not buying or sewing just because. Crochet, walking, and socializing are other options when I'm bored. And to be deliberate, create items that look pulled together for a grown-up, not an old woman. Now, a couple of people said uh, when I posted my Christmas projects list that they thought it was a cute list. So I just, I've, I've made PDFs of the blank sewing plan form that I made. One is has no cats on it and one has cats on it, and I've loaded those onto my website, so I put a link down below in the description box. So if you wanna look those up, or if you wanna use them, you're welcome to them. In terms of YouTube in my sewing life for 2024, last year I started doing Friday Sews in the fall. Surprisingly, it's been a much more rewarding and enjoyable experience than I thought it would be. So I will continue doing Friday Sews, which are more chatty, less focused, generally shorter videos. I may not do them every week. If I don't have anything to say, I'm not gonna record a video. And then of course I'll be doing these more focused project oriented videos. Next year I want to do a much better job of showing you why I made the decisions that I made and how I'm doing things, which means I'll be working on improving my camera work and my lighting so that I can better share things with you. There are a couple of personal goals I'm gonna share with you because they sort of relate to my sewing life. The first is that I'm going to continue to do the internet Sabbath, where I don't look at devices from Saturday at bedtime until Monday morning. This has been so beneficial not just for my personal life, because I'm getting a lot more stuff done, I'm having better conversations with my husband, but also my sewing life. I tend to sew a lot on Sundays, watch sports and sew in the afternoon. And I'm getting projects done a little more quickly and with fewer mistakes, because my concentration isn't constantly being broken by either a notification or me feeling compelled to look at something on my phone. If I have to look up something, I pull out a book. I don't look at a device. So it's, it's just completely improved my Sundays. And I also sleep better on Sunday nights. And we all know that you get to be a little bit older and sleep is sometimes difficult to come by and not and having a full day away from devices seems to also be helping with sleep. The second thing is that I need to take some of my time in the sewing room or where I'm thinking about sewing and work on my fitness. Now that I'm not working, I spend a lot of time either sitting at a computer, which I did at work too, or at the sewing machine or standing at the sewing table or the kitchen counter. When I was working, I would walk to the coffee room, I would go for walks outside at lunch or on coffee breaks, and I'm just not getting as much of that motion around. 
I see that my posture is just getting worse and worse. I'm losing muscle tone and I'm spending a lot of time and money trying to make clothes that fit. And if I let my body go, clothes won't fit. And if I let my body go, I won't be able to go out and do things and I will have a closet full of clothes that don't get warm. So this year, I plan to be in much better shape and hopefully have better posture by December of 2024. So those are my sewing and sewing related personal goals for 2024. I would love to hear about your goals. Are you participating in any challenges this year or do you plan to? I know a lot of people do make nine, make a garment a month, sew the stash, what is it, the whole 30 challenge. There are all kinds of challenges out there. Are you gonna jump in on any of those? Do you have a dream garment that you wanna make this year? Is there a work in progress that you wanna finish? I would love to hear your plans for this year. And like I say every time, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe, have at it, hit the notification bell. But I do appreciate you watching as always. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.